Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountain Top Church and your host for this study. I'm so glad to welcome you back to another episode of the Midweek Refill because this week we begin a brand new series that I'm really excited about. It's a challenging series for me to share with you and I know it's gonna be a challenging series for you to actually embrace. But the title of our series for the next four weeks is Trusting God with Your Entire Life. Trusting God with Your Entire Life. Listen, God wants to be our everything. But how often do you and I block God's progress in our life, God, even blocking God's blessings in our life, by getting in the way and insisting on handling everything ourselves? This series is going to challenge you as it's challenging me to trust God with every area of our lives, our entire life, God wants to be in it. And we have to give God the space to be God in our lives. So this is gonna be a great series. I'm excited for this journey we're gonna to take together as we learn how to really trust God in every area of our life. Please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and go beyond that by sharing this series with someone you love. There should be a link in the description box below where you can access the free PDF handout, or you can simply go to our church website and access it there. So let's begin this journey as we start this series entitled Trusting God with Your Entire Life. Part one of this series is called Surrendering Control to God surrendering control to God. Now, one of the most difficult things for any of us to do as human beings is to actually relinquish control. You know why? We are wired to run everything our way, to literally view life through the lens of our perspective and what we think it should look like, how we desire for the outcome to be. And then we have a tendency to attempt to manipulate life to get what it is that we feel should be our end result. But can I tell you something? When we take life into our own hands, we fail to trust God. And when we fail to trust God, we fail to live by faith. And when we fail to live by faith, we fail to live up to God's expectations for us as his children. And when we fail to live up to God's expectations for us as his children, we fail to allow God to be God in our entire life. Can you see why it is so critical, so vital, vital and so valuable to trust God with your entire life? You know, you may have a lot of relationships with people as I do who I love, many of whom I trust. Not a lot of people, very narrow amount of people that I trust with my secrets. You know why? Like you, I've been let down so many times before. Betrayal has happened. You, have you ever told someone a secret in confidence and they assured you it's just between you and them only to discover it wasn't long before your secret, which was told in confidence, became a secret to everybody told in confidence. That makes us begin to mistrust people. But you know what I've discovered is that we can often make the horrible mistake of putting God on the same level as people. And when we, put, when we put God on the same level as people, it's a horrible mistake because God has never lied. People lie all the time. God has never failed us. People fail us all the time. In fact, we fail ourselves all the time. God has never betrayed us. People will betray you. And so it makes it difficult when you look at God only through the lens that you would looking at another human being. But I love the scripture where it reminds us that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, 
and as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are the thoughts and the ways of God above the thoughts and the ways of humanity. So while we cannot always trust people, and sometimes, unfortunately, that even means those people or family members or friends who are closest to us, rest assured, we can always trust God. Therefore, trusting God with our entire life is not just a real possibility. It is a real pivotal shift that if you embrace it, can change the trajectory of your whole life and not just your life, but that of your generations yet to be born. And I'll show that to you in just a minute in the scriptures. So in this first session, we're talking about surrendering control to God. You know, my friends, trusting God with your entire life, it requires a genuine and utmost surrender of control. You know, I often see people who drive around with a bumper sticker or a tag on the front of their car that says something like this, God is my co-pilot. And I just really get irritated at that. I want to honk the horn <laughs> and tell them that God is your co-pilot. You're still going to end up in a bad place, a bad destination. Why? Because co means assistant or an equal. Co suggests that we're in this together. We're even one with another. If two people coordinate a program, a function, it means they worked on it together, they had equal input, and both of them get credit for all that goes right or wrong. When God is your co-pilot, it means you see yourself as equivalent to God, as equally responsible as God for whatever happens in your life. So we don't need God to be our co-pilot. What we need is for God to be the pilot and we take a seat way in the back somewhere. And when you surrender control to God of your everyday life and every situation, it means something so profound. You are no longer responsible for the outcome of your experiences in life. When you recognize God is the one who is in control and when you surrender, when you completely take your hands off the steering wheel of life and allow God to be God in your life, to guide your life, to lead your life, to structure your life and to steer your life, God is then responsible for the outcome. And friends, when God is responsible for your life, he can do a much better job than you and I could ever dream of. So trusting God with our lives, it requires a genuine surrender of control. You know, it's easy for us to hold on to our plans, our ways, our dreams, our thoughts, our uh, ideal concept of how life ought to be, how people ought to be, how things ought to work, how things ought to go. And sometimes we can even try to boss God around using prayer as a tool of manipulation. When we say, Lord, this is what I want, and yes, we're invited and encouraged to ask God for what we want, but we are also challenged to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, which represents me, the way that things are done in heaven. And so sometimes we can use prayer as a manipulative tool to use God as a cosmic vending machine. You know, put a seed in, pull a treat out. That still does not represent God being in control of your life. Sometimes we hold too tightly to our dreams, our wants, our wishes, our desires, and we never really release a grip off of our lives to allow God to even put a finger on our steering wheel. We must learn, and we must learn it quickly, that our hands are too unskilled to guide our lives. We need God. We need to therefore surrender control
to God. Stop trying to control your own life. As a matter of fact, for some of you, stop trying to control the life of other people. So trust in the Lord, the verse says, with all your heart, do not lean on your own understanding. It goes on to say, in all your ways, acknowledge him, that's God, and he, that's God, will make straight your paths. Now, I want you to understand what Solomon's saying. Solomon's not saying that if you trust God, every detail of your life is going to be flawless and perfect. No. He paints another word picture here of a path that is hewn out or cut out. And whenever a path is cut out, there are trees, rubbish, stubble, trash, rocks, things that could trip you up that are removed for the path to be created. You know, I love to go walking and hiking, particularly in the woods. I, I love that, that's the country boy in me. And I love to connect with nature. And one thing I've noticed though, is that when I'm hiking in the woods on a hiking trail, even though there is a path, sometimes that path wanders and it meanders and it turns and it has a serpentine nature to it. It's not always straight, but guess what else? It's also not always without things that can make you stumble. But here's what I discovered. The shoes that I wear when I'm hiking makes the difference in the journey. And here's what I mean. If I'm wearing my regular sneakers, I'm going to have pebbles in my shoe. I'm going to have little rocks in my shoes, little dirt, debris can get in my shoes. But when I wear my hiking boots, because they come higher up the ankle, I have less of a struggle with things getting inside. But additionally, the, the stumbling blocks that are still there, those uneven rocks that are there, maybe twigs or what have you that's there, because of the footing I have with my hiking boots, I can step on it and use it as traction that helps me go farther faster. Well, faith and surrendering control to God is like the difference between a sneaker and a hiking boot when you're hiking. When you and I try and do things on our own, it's like wearing sandals on a hiking trail. Every possible thorn, thistle, insect, you name it, varmint, we're susceptible to being affected by it. Why? Because we're not covered. But when we wear the hiking boot through the trails of life, the meandering serpentine pathways of life, there will still be dangers along the way. But because our foot is covered and our ankles are covered, it reduces the issues that we will face as we navigate our way on our path to our ultimate destination. So when you're in control, it's like wearing sandals in the woods. <laughs> Get ready for all sorts of pain. Get ready for all sorts of dilemmas, drama. But when God is in control of our lives, he makes that pathway easier because he becomes our footing that allows us to navigate and step on things and use it as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God and he will make your paths straight. So in this week's handout, which you should be able to access down in the description box below, or you can go to our church website and find it there. I want you to get it because there's some great reflection questions that will enable you to delve a bit deeper as you surrender control to God and really learn how to trust God with your entire life. One of those questions for this week is what areas of your life do you find it challenging to relinquish control to God. And I want you to be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell me, God already knows, so you might as well be honest with yourself. 
because he knows things about us that we won't even acknowledge. So what areas of your life do you need to really surrender and you find it challenging to relinquish control to God? Here's the next one. How does trying to rely on your own understanding rather than trusting God's wisdom hinder your relationship with him? You know, I can think of so many times that I have got caught up in moments where I was more concentrated on the comments of my critics than I was on the commendations of Christ. I can remember staying up late at night, just being anxious because this person said this, and this person didn't like that, and this person didn't like the way I did this, or maybe the shoes I wore. And I was just bombarded at one point in my life with criticism. And one night I decided to read the word of God. And I was reminded of the passage where the word of the Lord says that God never sleeps and he never slumbers. It dawned on me at two in the morning while I'm up worried about what critics have to say about me. God is up watching me worry about things that he never worries about. So you know what I did? I realized that where my focus was, that was being on people and having what many of you have called approval addiction. I was actually hindering my relationship with God. So here's what I did. And this may work for you. I wrote out everything on my mind. And beside those things that were on my mind, I wrote a list of the people's names that were just jumping around in my thought life, that were keeping me from sleeping, keeping me from have, having peace. After I did that, I tore down that notebook, offered it up to the Lord, prayed a prayer, and said, Lord, I'm putting this in your hands. You know what happened next? I went to sleep, and from that moment forward, I never struggled with worrying about what people had to say. You know why? It's because I began to realize that as I surrendered control to God, and as I trusted God with my entire life, even my critics, because I don't have enemies, but my critics, I discovered a peace that I never experienced before. And I also discovered that when I focus on what God wants rather than what people want, God will be happy, but he'll also make me happy. And it was my own internal unhappiness that made me pay more attention to the critics than I did to Christ. So that might help somebody who's listening or viewing right now. Turn that thing over to God. Surrender control to God. Try that journal that I did. It really worked to help me to really refocus my attention back to God. Your third reflection question this week is to Share an experience where you surrender control to God and witness his faithfulness in guiding your pathway. That was my experience. God showed me his faithfulness. And from that point on, my life changed, my ministry changed. As a result, the message changed and the church changed. Lives were changed. And we began to explode at that point in growth spiritually and in every other way, numerically and all. So I want you to think about those reflection questions this week as you go back and ponder Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. There's another passage of scripture I want you to study this week, and you might want to formulate a little group on Zoom or get on the phone with people who maybe don't use technology, but you can send them a copy of the handout and you guys discuss it and formulate your own little group of study session. Genesis 22 is about Abraham and Isaac. And I want you to look at that passage this week and explore how the story of Abraham's willingness to offer his own son Isaac as a sacrifice demonstrated an ultimate act of trust in God's plan and God's provision for his life. Wonderful story. And maybe we'll talk about it in the future. I might even email you a devotional this week relevant to that. So I want to encourage you to apply this teaching to your life, to surrender control to God in every facet of your life this week, as we learn 
over the next remaining three sessions of how to trust God with our entire lives. Don't forget to get the free PDF handout and you can also access other materials that I've created for your spiritual growth. Hey, this is Bishop Littman with the Midweek Refill. I love you. May God continue to bless you. And until next time, you go with God. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that thumbs up.